and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the cyber power pc spring overwatch invitational zp here with hex as we go into our third place matchup for and c9 versus rise now c9 hex they barely missed out on the grand final arguably by one team fight if you go back to gibraltar so they're still very strong here in this tournament. Meanwhile, Rise, uh, they did fall rather convincingly a set ago, and yet they still have the ability to surprise teams. Well, Cloud9, of course, still working on some stuff roster-wise, but I I'm more concerned with Rise Nation. Just reading some of the tweets that happened just after they lost, they're an emotional team, and they can go on tilt after they lose stuff like that. And I know Faz in particular had some tweets about they they're a little disappointed what happened. But I would say to them, the silver lining is, one, you can still win some cash here with third place. Two, beating Cloud9 is still a big deal. This is a, a premier team who's trialing Koreans, uh, probably have Koreans on their team right now, so it can still be a big boon to them. All is not lost just yet. For for Rise Nation. Uh, no, not at all. And it is interesting here. I'd still argue that there's probably more at stake here for Rise because Rise is still looking for good victories to put on their belts to show that, hey, they've maybe had a little bit of a rough time over the last few months, but they are getting it back together. Meanwhile, for C9, I think even if C9 were to lose this matchup, they still have the excuse of they're rebuilding. They have a new coach. They have many new members and they're looking to gel across the board. So C9, no matter what, I feel like is in a honeymoon phase here. Nonetheless, I think C9 would like to finish things out for third because they do get more prize money and it still looks better than coming in fourth. I mean, those games we had earlier were just insane. I mean, C9 versus LG Evil especially. C9, by all rights, probably should have won that had it not been for Train and Super just clutching it out on tank play towards the end. And it was really fun to watch. Train had some great tracer play. Dorado was an amazing map to watch, but we will see the LG Evil guys in a little bit. But you're right. I mean, there's still a lot to play for here, regardless of being a third, uh, third place match here. And I do believe we have picks and bans if you want to go over some of those. Yeah, we are going to take a look at the map picks and bans that have been going on here. And it is interesting just to look at map strategy over the course of the tournament. We did see, of course, moments where you take a look at a team like LG Evil, where they liked going the control yesterday. And then today they went to maps that were really good for Reinhardt. But what really strikes out to you when you look at this pick and ban list in front of us here, Hex? I think the ban on Hanamura by Cloud9 is, is smart and it's almost forced because Rise Nation <laughs> chose it to go to their last time. Uh, I think Ilios <laughs> could be an interesting one. Uh, like, see what happens uh, there. Uh, Cloud9 could possibly run the uh, the pharmacy combo and Rise doesn't necessarily have the combo to run, so they're gonna might have problems with that. And depending on stages on Ilios, we could see some Sniper v Sniper. Uh, Retsy versus Shorefork could come into action. And then, you know, a lot of this is pretty standard, but Cloud9 definitely favoring control maps. It is funny that you mentioned that there just because of the part where teams know what they've practiced on and they know what they might be weaker on. And the, the fact that Hanamura was the first ban here goes, wait a second. If we think Rise has practiced on this at all and we haven't put much time on it, we're actually just going to remove this immediately because we don't want any part of it. And for C9, that's probably just smart strategy. Uh, what strikes out to me here when you take a look at it is that Rise, almost some of the, what LG Evil has been going with here is going for more, they're going for hybrid maps, but they're going for hybrid maps where you don't always have to run Winston levels of dive. They do leave themselves open here to sort of take a page out of the LG Evil playbook if they want to go down that route. I really hope we get to a map five because it would be Dorado. And like I said, this, the Cloud9 game on Dorado was just bonkers. Uh, I, th I think Rise now has to be prepared for a Sombra because that's the most Sombra I've seen in competitive play in a little bit. And Shore Forge is busting it out, running the Sombra on maps that you don't generally see it, especially uh, Eichenwald. It worked out pretty well for them, this Sombra pick. So there, there's a lot of interesting stuff that Cloud9 is doing. And I believe as Sideshow brought it up, I think part of it could be attributed to their coach Bishop, a very innovative guy very intelligent person we've both met and i think you you can see that it is there's some thoughtfulness going behind a lot of these compositions bishop is great and it's not just because he went to my alma mater it's because bishop <laughs> as hex mentioned we did get a chance to talk to him over in london at one point and he's just a very intelligent guy in terms of how he thinks about the overwatch scene so for c9 this is why i also give c9 a bit of room here where even if c9 were to lose this third place match and have somewhat of a disappointing finish I trust in Bishop to actually pull things together and make this hybrid team where you're combining both NA, EU, and in this case, uh, Korean players all together in one pot. It's sort of, I think, the future of Overwatch in many respects as we do go more global. You look at where the future of the game is going. So C9 could be the first game to, or first team to really make this sort of combination work. And it's interesting to just watch it all develop. 
Uh, we will be getting into map here shortly. I, I believe we're just waiting like 30 seconds. I think I've been told is the countdown. It is some standout stuff I want to look at just roster wise. I think God's going over to tank has been great for them. They, they've had nothing but great things to say about how he approaches mm. the game, his approach on that. I thought Zephyr played an amazing tracer. I thought he had one of his best tracer mm. games that we've seen in a while. And Rise Nation has risen largely because of how well Midnight and um, excuse me, Midnight and Spirit have been playing. I mean, Spirit bringing Reaper back into the meta it's been amazing spirit has had a much better tournament here for rise where yes they might be out of contention for the grand finals but i think for spirit where he's had somewhat of a rough few months for him to make the comeback that he has it's promising for rise especially when they have been just looking for opportunities to prove themselves a little bit more consistently well, we are in game now. We're kicking it off on Ilios. Let's see what stage we have. We are at the Sparta pit right now. This is a map that you will very often see Farrah Mercy combinations. And Shore 4 and Adam have been, well, a Farrah Mercy combination as old as time. I've been, like <laughs> a closed beta even. So they've been the core of this Cloud 19 for a long time. And Rise Nation has shown that they can struggle a bit against this combo. Well, the interesting thing is that uh, Adam's still showing Lucia right now, but if he does go on to Mercy, uh, Adam was just talking the other day about how overall he has something like 2,000 hours of Mercy played going all the way back to Beta 1. So if anyone knows how to play everyone's favorite German doctor, it would be Adam. So you're telling me Adam's a Mercy main, by the way. Got it. I, you, you know, can't. I wouldn't tell that to Tai Mu, <laughs> but uh, there is evidence that you add up all his hours, he could in fact be a Mercy main. Adam was unkillable as Mercy for the longest of times. It looks like they were going to run it with uh, without a Mercy, but instead Wolf will be on the Zenyatta, probably going to give Shore 4 a lot of orb help. Oh, Shore 4, you will expect the Wolf to be giving him a lot of attention as right now, C9 is not going in for any sort of crazy dive. They're willing to hold this back a bit, wait for people to go in on Shore 4, and as they dive in on Shore 4, the counter dive is there. They swarm over Desro and take him out immediately, so they were just waiting for someone to try and take out Shore 4. Still though, 5 versus 5, Sully gets picked, and there's still an opportunity for Ryze to pull this back, but C9 with far more control to open things out. Yeah, Spirit going down there too. I think what the Rise Nation composition is going to try to do, considering that they're not running really a, a fair mercy or, or of their own or even a fair of their own, is probably send Spirit in there to get the dash through in the sky, and hopefully that's enough to put the damage on him that Midnight needs to finish him off. Of course, uh, orbs will be a, a big part of this too, so Shore Force is going to have to stay out of Discord range and sight lines. Well, for now, C9 in firm control. Rise going to have to find a better way of coming back in here. And this is definitely one of the control point rounds that is more difficult to retake once you lose it. A lot of options for C9 to stall this out, even if they end up on the bad end of a fight here. Sully, though, in a bit of trouble here in the back. Discord orb under pressure from three. Gonna have to rewind out, but while that goes on, Gods opens up Faz and leads the way for C9. C9 able to collapse in and get the kills they need. Just really aggressive. They saw it opening and went with it. Spirit will be the last to die there. I think he could have jumped off the edge. There was no way he was getting out of that. And now they're playing pretty aggressive up front. I like this from teams. They got the Tracer up. They're always going to be pretty safe as long as Recall is up. Still have Blinks up. And this can be a place where teams hold once they have control of the point. Just don't even let them out through their chokes. And right now, they're just trying to strangle them and not allow them to even get in position. Spirit was down to Sally right there. That really hurts the push. That was more sure for where a Rocket just domed Spirit from afar and Sully was right there with the alley-oop cleanup. Still though, good teamwork between sure for and Sully to set that up and Ryze has just had a lot of trouble actually getting a clean engagement here. Sully is pressuring them pretty heavily from the back, sure for being a huge problem here in the front and they don't have great ways of attacking sure for this position. He has a lot of card, but now Sully goes down immediately, picked off. That can be the danger of being that far out. And now with a 6v4 opportunity, C9 might have to give this up. It's a really nice couple of picks, but they're going to bring it oh. back. Now we're on a 4v4 as we enter ultimate phases of the game. And now here comes a transcend from Lock. Dueling transcendence is on the point, so that's going to keep everyone healthy. Still, Short 4 throws down the barrage, gets two. Sure for bringing it right back. C9 was willing to use alts there, even though it was a kind of a rough engage, but it would have been very justified in backing out Hex, but Sure for says no. Another beautiful rocket hits on the spear towards the end. Two to finish it out, and Cloud9. What more can you say about the stage than the fact that they were incredibly composed as they held on to the round after getting the first point? 
And the first point is crucial. We saw it all day yesterday. The first point, 99% generally. We will take back at 99% there. So just absolute dominance during that round. No real answer for sure for I don't believe he even died. And if so, it was only once. You saw late desperation alts, but they already lost three. So Rise needs to find a different answer here. This is the stage that you will please see Widow on. Sure for already queued up on it. If they peak this, which Rise did yesterday, that they're going against Widow, Betsy will probably go back and have to try to counter snipe. It will be interesting to see how the Widow pans out here. We've been seeing teams run Widow more often, period, as of late, where they're more willing to experiment. And Ruin Stage is a stage where you have a lot of room for Widow. Huge sight lines, as you can see early on, as Sure4 goes for the early pick. Doesn't get it, but he's going to be able to use multiple positions here to get free shots that could just be one shots that win the fight outright. So now they have to play in a very defensive position. That's uh, I've always mentioned with Widow, she changes the battlefield without even firing a shot. You see them all hiding behind pillars and in holes. The control point is going to unlock and they already have a presence on the point. Desro's gonna try to get in here because they don't really want to give this up for free. They do eventually get on the point, but still have to be careful of those sight lines. No one's pressuring sure for Bradsey just gets domed. Sure for with the flick shot right onto the head. Three to one in favor of C9 early on here. And just like that, Cloud9, nothing flashy. They isolate Desro, they get the pick on the trace from the back, and that gives them the point relatively easily. Well, first point captured, and this switch Oof. did come. Retsy switched to Widow, but doesn't even get 10 <laughs> feet out of his spawn before Shorefort puts him back in spawn. It's going to be difficult for them to come out here, and uh, they're holding pretty far back, which I think is probably fine with the Widow. There's really no reason to go too far forward here. No, in fact, when you're running the Widow, it's important not to press the things forward because then the Widow isn't going to have sight on the things yeah. that you're actually fighting. You don't want to have an inadvertent five versus six as Spirit eats a pulse bomb early on. Sully, very good here at applying pressure to the back line and just interrupting Rise from getting the 6v6 opportunities they're looking for, where you look at Rise right now, they have to give a lot of respect to the Widowmaker in the back. They have to be slow about things and then they open themselves up to Sully in the end. It's a tough road for Rise right now. Really not much can happen until they deal with Shorefor. He has to be the prime target here. They have to put some pressure on him, make him uncomfortable, but Shorefor's also going to have infrared sight up soon, so even if Retsy stays on this, he's going to be at an extreme disadvantage in the Widow v. Widow. A lot of ways that C9 can win the fight right now is the moral of the story is Midnight gets isolated by Zephyr and taken down. Two quick kills for C9, and that means nothing can pressure Shorefor in the back of Sally! Another special delivery right to Retsy. Uh, Sully's saying, Sure4, you're not the only one that's going to kill a Widow in this game. I mean, I've heard Korean tracers are pretty good, and we've seen it all day from Cloud9. <laughs> Just pulse bomb after pulse bomb has been landing for this team, and still no real answer for Sure4 as he pops his infrared. Well, for Rise, they don't really have a whole lot of alts to work with here because they've been so tentative, but they're going to have to go in now. 88% for C9, which means Rise, this is their final attempt, Tex. This fight must be successful. Spirit to the back. Dragon Blade coming out. Going to get nullified a bit here by the Transcendence. Doesn't get the targets he's looking for, and the Blade will get nothing done here early on. Rise already in trouble. Lock about to go down. First kill comes in from Sully, and the rest of C9 is there in the fall through. Three to one here to open things up, and though Rise is fighting it back a little bit, they've just taken too much damage to effectively bring this back in a convincing manner. Hey, I wish we had a scoreboard, so just trying to recall it, I think there's been one death on the side of Cloud9 all stage, and it <laughs> happened very late there. Ah, oh, Rutsi doing his best impression of a clay shooting target there towards the very end. He was pulled and Surefor pulled the trigger. <laughs> I would say the biggest problem there for Rise is that Rise was so respectful of C9 that they were never able to build up a critical mass of alts and have the point where, all right, well, we've been dying multiple times, but here's where we use four or five alts, retake the point and give ourselves a chance. They just had very low amounts of attempts on the point there, period. I think they have a difficult time on that stage when Retsy is getting out sniped, because that hasn't been the case for them before. Retsy's been able to at least stay even with the opposing Widow, but they played it so far back, they never pressed the issue, short for never really under any legitimate pressure, and it's just a really simple recipe to lose that stage, is just let Widow do whatever they want. Short for feeling it on the purple French lady, and he's going to stick on it on this stage. You don't see a ton of uh, Widow on this stage. 
<laughs> no, you do not. And uh, Sherfo right now thinks he can make it work. And why not? You do have decent sight lines here. You can dominate this top sight line if you have, say, a soldier trying to poke in. And if nothing else, Sherfo being on the Widow is going to greatly control where Ryze can move. And Ryze right now, they're seeking refuge onto the point. But Sherfo is still plenty of ways of poking in here with this Widow. Uh, and, and still, Shorefor is just going to be largely uncontested until Desro decides to do something about it. But Shorefor still with the sight lines is going to take down Retsy, one of the primary threats to deal with long range damage. Vaz tries to bring it back. Shorefor finally down, and Ryze is taking the point, but at what cost? Well, part of the cost was Adam sending people into the ocean. It was a beautiful boop to even things up here for C9, and now C9 with the advantage. Going back onto the point, it's the bloodthirsty supports coming out here. <laughs> Adam and Rolf getting their pound of flesh, and that's going to be C9 retaking this point. Why not, Hex? When Rolf was added to this roster nearly a year ago, or well, actually six months ago, I don't know, I'm terrible at time. Anyway, I thought it was one of the best pickups they could have possibly made when they added uh, Rolf and Rib, who have just been all-stars in their selective regions and still showing it now. It's a nice opening for Ryze as they to win the Tracer be Tracer. Ryze opened this up pretty well. Three to one to start things out. Retzi and Spirit striking blood quickly. And now C9, the question is, do they delay this while they control it or do they back out? And actually, they don't have the option. They go, they are going to lose the point before <laughs> Retzi can delay or before Zephyr can delay rather. And that will be a take for Ryze. So Ryze, if nothing else, is making this closer. And the early Widow opening that we saw, no longer a thing. It's been nice for Ryze, at least to for force Shorefor onto a different hero. Shorefor's played like eight different heroes today throughout the day. It's been insane to watch his range on everything. So now they have to find a different answer for Shorefor as he's taken to the skies. Maybe Retsy can do it. Soundbearers come off for both sides. Sunbear comes out from Rise here as they try and hold on. Here comes a self-destruct looking for anything. Not going to connect. And Gods isolates Lock while that goes down. So now 65 for Surefor. But Surefor in rough shape here. Taking refuge. Oh my goodness. It puts, oh, no! What a dead. play! Desro juked into the ocean as Surefor survives. Oh my goodness. Surefor earned that kill and then some. That, that, talk about, he just, he made his opponent beat himself. I mean, I understand oh. the, the want to have the hero play on Winston to be able to do that, but I feel it's a low probability <laughs> engagement. Well, regardless, Ryze still has the lead here by about 30%, and we'll see what Retsy can get done on Tactical Visor. I think the moment he sees Shorefor alone is the moment you pop that right away. You trade an alt for a Pharah. Well, Spirit winning the Tracer v. Tracer early on. 65 here from Ryze. Zephyr holding on to the self-destruct and really neutralizing Retsy up here, not letting him get much off of that tact Visor. Is good use of defensive Matrix, and here comes the self-destruct onto the point. The self-destruct goes in. Nothing comes of it. Ryze still pressuring in, and with the boom in, from Spirit, this is looking much better for Ryze. Zephyr can get knocked out of his mech, and Ryze should be able to retake this. I give props to Spirit. He's played a multitude of heroes today as well, and he's been opening these fights by winning the Tracer 1v1, which you have to do. It's worth noting, though, that they still have not wrestled control back of the point. A nice Primal Rage from Gods will buy them even more percentage points, so now Cloud9 puts themselves in position for one more fight, probably map win. Very close here, though. It's a much better showing here for Ryze. Part of it is that it isn't quite as accommodating of a map for Farah, which Surefor has been on for most of the game. But now he's swapped off. Surefor now on the 76, going to play this more ground and pound style as C9 does look for the one final team fight, which will put them in over the top. Spirit counter firing right here. C9 actually being very tentative on this engage. They're waiting for the right opportunity, and it'll be C9's last attempt to flip this as well. So it all comes down to this fight. Pulse Bomb in from Spirit does not connect. Here comes a sound barrier in from Rise. They need to get at least one pick off of this if they want to secure this fight, and they're not able to do it. C9 still in their face, and the counter sound barrier is out. There's life in C9 yet. A much later sound barrier, and that's going to lead them to feel invincible as Selly goes off with the triple kill on the point. Rise gets a couple to try to bring this back, but it is only Retzi alive. Cloud9 will flip it over. Rise, one last chance to contest. Rise now, and you say one last chance, but this is going to be a very curried chance here where they just have to rush onto the point. They can't get good positioning, but they will have a transcendence, which at the very least is good for rushing onto Adam. the point in these situations. But they have to hurry up here. It's 97%, 98%. They must touch it, and there they go. Spirit gets onto the point, and Locke is going to use the transcendence to buy some time here. And actually, they might grab this point. C9 is holding quite a bit away here. Most of the fight is taking place off of the point. Both teams still at full, and yes, Rise is retaking the point. C9 really needs to get back on here. 
and they will get back indeed with a trend sense of their own. And sure for late tech visor should be all they need to clean up, but still options here for Spirit to be a hero. A short four does go down to aforementioned Spirit. He is discorded, so his life probably not very long. A nice Primal Rage has bought them some time, but with Spirit going down, I don't know if they're going to have the cleanup. Midnight will actually take down Adam with that self-destruct. And Rise pulls the pulls stage back. Rise staying alive here in Ilios, not going down here just yet. Desro probably thinking all that is holy that uh, <laughs> one play I was not directly on camera. Oh, man. Uh, well, you know, sometimes Winston just wants to be that hero, but I, I, Cloud9 giving up all that space on the point was an interesting gambit. I think they were trying to get the kills in the backline while Adam was just going to dance around the point, and he did a valiant job of doing so. But so, some really nice reinforcements there. The self-destruct just clears out that point. Some of these points on control maps, there's nowhere to hide. You just have to get off the point. You can't be on the point and behind something else. So nice play there, and now Rai is still in this. Rai is very much still in this, but this is the first stage that we saw earlier in the map where they really didn't have an answer for Sure4 here to the left. And again, we see Sure4 going to the same position, using the cover of the map to give him a better spot here on Farah. And if they deep dive him, C9 is going to be there with the immediate punish. That's the type of coordination that C9 runs with nowadays. And for this stage in particular, Rise did not have an answer. And thus far, you see that Sure4 is getting a whole lot of room to work with. First point so critical on this stage in particular, and Rise has been fighting off of the point in different places. Give it off, Spirit Front has to get on too late. No. But nine will take control. Well, Hex, you are roboting out of control right now, but C9 does take control of the point, and sure for piling on here, just casual rocket kill after casual rocket kill, and C9 will be throwing Rise off the point once more, and yeah, Rise did give up control of the point a little bit earlier, but that fight was still going very much in C9's favor, and now sure for he gets to back up and go to his perch once more. Well, pray for me, I'm under attack by Comcast Nation. It's been an issue, I'm looking into it. Ugh. My ultimate is charging. The Comcast Nation strikes when you least expect it. <laughs> it just happens, but the finest techs are working on it, or so we think. Either way, though, C9 is back here in the point. They lose Selly. Selly dives in deep, gets punished. Now it's a 65 for Rise, and we'll see if this positioning works out as another goes down. It's a good pulse bomb by Spirit and Cheer 4. Now d deep dives in to try to equalize, and instead has to back off. So he's out of the fight, and effectively a huge power play for Rise now as they get onto the point, and they should be able to cap this here. Well, Zephyr gets on last second to prevent that cap, and he's just going to dance around and trade his life eventually for percentage points. Gods comes in and tries to help him out. They will get cleaned up. Still just poking around this point, though. It's a light, it's a nice delay. Rise retaking the point, but C9 very much can be content with how the beginning of this map went. They are going up against somewhat of an ult advantage from Rise going into this next fight, but they only have to win two more fight techs to take the round, so plenty of room to work with here for C9, even if Rise converts these ultimates into a team fight victory for the fight that's coming up now. C9, if they know what the alts are at, should just be poking a little bit until they get a little bit even. A preemptive sound barrier comes out for Rise. Well, Sam Bear comes out, self-destruct in over the top, the fireworks connect, and Sally is out of it to begin with. A counter self-destruct comes in from Zephyr, doesn't quite get what he's looking for, and though this has been trading out evenly, it is more in Ryze's favor because even if they lose the fight here, they've lost in such a way that they can delay out for a long time and likely equalize the score here so far. C9, though, they're coming right back in, Hex. Well, these couple late kills are really nice for them because the reinforcements are going to be back here momentarily and they're not even really going to need them. <laughs> Cloud9 cleans up entirely. We'll flip it back over 65% for them. Not the worst there for Rise, even though they did end up losing that fight. It was a long loss where they gained quite a bit of percentage. Now, I do think with how things are going right now, their margin for here is probably just one fight. So they do need to make the most of this. They are going to be at an ult disadvantage. But if they take this fight, they do have very good outs for winning. But that is going to be a huge pick. Yeah. Selly gets on the spirit immediately, and that really ruins the amount of time that Rise has left. Well, it was very likely going to be one push anyway, so it's going to be this push for the last of it now at 92% for Cloud9. Both tanks rotating through the cabana, trying to get some pressure on. Bloodless so far. 
Rise, now back to full strength. Spirit has rejoined, and here comes the Transcendence. Lock has to use it early. Rulf is still holding his, is going to chain it after the Sound Bear. The Sound Bear now is worn off, and here comes Rulf on the Transcendence. It's good ult chaining by C9 as Desro goes down. Six versus five, and the support alt advantage works very much in their favor as the tanks converge and wipe out the remainder of Rise. That's gonna be C9 taking Ilios three to one. Really nice positioning by the Cloud9 tanks there. They went over top through the entry point that Rise was coming through. Got so much cleave and diva damage done. All soft targets cleaned up. Adam, the boop of the match. Uh, definitely see more Lucio play the games nowadays as, of course, Lucio Boop freshly buffed, way better at throwing people into the abyss. And this is the fight where we saw the supports for C9 just have a run of it. Well, I mean, you look at Rolf's percentages there, 48% kill participation. A Zenyatta is a dangerous, dangerous thing. And Adam has always been... It, what, what impressed me about Adam on support is that he plays all of them equally well. Uh, maybe, I guess you, you could say his Ana isn't top tier, but really across the board, you can put him on any support and barely lose anything. Well, the other thing about Adam, too, is that he has quite a bit of experience in the scene. You would have to struggle to find a support in Overwatch with more playtime in competitive matches than Adam. I mean, he is one of the old guard, but the fact that he is still on a top team like C9 and still getting great production, it's a testament to how good of a player Adam really is. He's been able to shift with the metas, which I think, to your point, is a mark of a great player as well, because I remember when Mercy went out of the meta for a while, he was still crushing it on Zenyatta and was still unkillable as Zenyatta. It's, it, as a support, it's just very difficult to pin down Adam and keeping your healing alive, always great. All right, so we're going to be heading to the next map here. Not much of a delay this time around as Eichenwald. The castle is going to be next en route, and this pick was Rise Nation's pick, so we'll see if they have anything extra in store here to deal with C9, but so far, things have looked pretty good for C9. Now, you can't look at that last map in Ilios and say that it was anything but dominant in C9's favor, and I, I think for me, the most impressive part was how C9 handled the well stage, where just their positioning there and their set plays for punishing anyone that went in on Share 4, it was great coordination, and it was nice to see. I'm happy we're going to Eichenwald because we saw Sombra on Eichenwald. We saw Reaper on Eichenwald. It's nice to see these heroes come into play. And right now, I mean, Spirit's already queued up on the Reaper. Their strategy to deal with a Pharaoh Mercy combo, which they had to run against, is we're just not going to. We're going to win the ground war, really commit to it. But yeah, this one should be interesting, to, to say the least, because both teams have run unorthodox comps. Why don't you take a look at the C9 defense as it rolls out here in Zephyr. Well, we'll see if he goes for this. Probably not. He is running back into the spawn. I would love to see more Reaper in play. The two heroes I root for most, just because we don't see them as often and they are quite good, is that I would love to see more Widow, which we are starting to see. And seeing more Reaper situationally, I think would be cool. Uh, he is getting a few small buffs in an upcoming patch, but we'll see if that's enough to bring him more into the fold. Yeah, no love for Symmetra. I see how it is. I no, see how it is. None. <laughs> I am against order. I am all about chaos. So me and Symmetra, we just don't get along on a life philosophy type of level hex. Fair enough. Uh, defensive roster will be locked in. They're going to go triple DPS here. Short four on a defensive Genji, and they're going to run a Tracer 76 with it. Offensively, also triple DPS, but they're going to throw Spirit on the Reaper. Again, I mentioned yesterday, probably one of his breakout heroes. And Spirit right now, his target is going to be simple. He wants to get in on gods early on, or anyone they can get close to, period. Reaper can surprise people, especially when you just haven't seen him in comp all that often. And why not? For Spirit, it's comfort pick. Going to the back, looking for sure for early on, and takes him down. You might have deflect, but it doesn't matter when there's a shotgun hitting you from the rear. Six versus five for eyes, and they're catching C9 a bit off guard here. Yeah, Spirit actually takes down Zephyr, too. He's been really good at not just uh, focusing down tanks. And Reaper has that deceptive range, because even when those pellets hit from a distance, they still hit for a lot. And he's been able to get kill after kill. Now, still trying to hold his high ground as Cloud9 as Gods jumps back in. Reaper's can, been controlling heavy space, and he was also keeping Gods out of the fight. Gods did not want to challenge Spirit directly, and for good reason. Now, we do have Sully with an early attack visor, trying to pull it back, but there's just too many members of C9 dead. They lost too many from Spirit, and as a result, Ryze is going to take this first point very quickly. Couple late contests come in there. Now, sure for, he, like I said, he's been playing every hero today. He'll switch over to the McCree. I think McCree on this second point can be great. It's just going to be a matter of can they get him set up in the proper positioning. 
Well, the interesting thing about McCree is that McCree is actually very, very good versus Reaper. Two parts of it. Not only yeah. can he outduel Reaper from the mid-range relatively easily, but Flashbang is one of the best ways of dealing with a Death Blossom, no matter how you set it up. Especially when Azaria is not in play, which it clearly is not here. You can't run a shield Death Blossom to save you from um, Flashbang in this case. It's also a great deterrent. If you hit one headshot on Reaper, he's going to back up. He does not want to fight with that low health. Short 4 takes down Spirit. Sure for right now in a beautiful position here in the back, supported by Nana. Many targets for him to just lay in Peacemaker shots onto. This is great from C9, and I gotta think that we're gonna be seeing Spirit switch off, and there it is. Spirit no longer on the Reaper, going the D.Va, and that's pretty smart, because I don't think you would have wanted to stay on the Reaper versus a McCree of the level of Sure for. No, not on this stage especially. Maybe when you get into last and it gets a little bit close quarters. Now, Retsy has gone off of the McCree because he was trying to duel Shore for on it, but uh, maybe the, the Widow v. Widow experience proving that he can't really stand toe-to-toe stand -to -toe with him. Shore 4 well, says Retsy. his Tracer is not great either. Jeez. Sure, for lands a flashbang and C9 with two early kills, just going to rush this right back into Rise. And for Rise, this has been a tough baptism here. This was the map that they wanted to go to, and Cloud9's defense has very much stymied them here so far. Not a great answer to McCree, and not an answer to the tank play of C9, which has been suffocating. I, they're holding the high ground really hard that you have to think at some point it's got to be Spirit and Desro who get up there, but who's going to go with them? Who's going to do the actual damage there? You can't just sit below Shore for and let him play Shooting Gallery. Well, the big thing here for Shore for too is that he's getting constant heals, so he can be a lot more aggressive on McCree. A McCree that's getting pocketed effectively is much more of a pain to deal with because you can't just poke him out of the fight. He can actually poke you out of the fight to some extent, so it's making things difficult on all ends. Here comes the sound bear from C9, though. They're going to rush us in. It's high noon. The Deadeye comes out and does not get the kill. The defensive matrix stops it. It wasn't the transcendence. The D matrix ate the bullet, and now there's an opportunity for Rise as they take down gods. Well, Selly's up over the top. He's got his visor out trying to get something done. Well, actually, Selly didn't pop a visor. That was on the other side. My apologies there. Midnight does go down to a Helix Rocket from Selly. They've gotten a lot of really free push, though. The cute thing that Rise Nation has done is they've been pushing this cart all the while. Very, very missing a rope. I mean, they've been pushing the cart, yes, but they've been so far away from getting a clean team fight. I mean, I guess it's better than not getting the push at all, but C9 still, even from this distance, probably has a margin of two team fights, so long as they don't get wiped directly on the payload. So, yes, Rise has gotten some progress, but Sure 4 still hasn't died in forever now, it feels like. So they have to do something right. to get rid of this hit scan pressure over the top. But taking that free push means that if they win one clean fight, it's possible they can get to second rather than trying to win the fight and then getting it to the cart where it is now. So take what they're giving you and they were giving up free cart push. C9 right now, just very much sitting pretty on top of the castle rampart right now. Meanwhile, you take a look at Rise, they are altering their attack plan. Rather than going in from the front on the streets, they go in from the side and they will force C9 off of their high ground, so it's a much better approach. They blow up gods with the pulse bomb, and now let's see what they do with this opportunity. Can they capitalize? And no, sure for not under pressure in the back once more, punishes Desro, and now it's five versus five. It's a better opportunity as sure for almost gets knocked off, but not quite. Spirit came close, but not close enough. There are skirmishes going on all over the place. Some really nice play out of Spirit's Diva to just isolate Rolf and make him a non-factor. However, C9 has banked a ton of vaults during this fight. C9 has a lot of tools to bring this back, and there's one of them going off right now. Selly moving out the attack visor. Surefor coming in on the flank. Probably has Deadeye in his mind right now. Will he use it? It's not a great opportunity. People are using the payload for cover, and no, they're giving this up. They realize it's gone, and Surefor jumps into the abyss. Well, Zephyr didn't get the memo. He's on the D.Va. He's going to stall out just for a little bit longer. Rise Nation, I think, did a great job of separating Cloud9. Once they got them off the high ground, they never let them get back in. They went into skirmish mode and started taking 1v1s all over the map. All right, so C9, we do have a switch up here. Sure, for no longer on the McCree. Does not like the close quarters aspect here for playing it. Instead, going to go to Tracer. But let me tell you, Hex, this is a great opportunity here for Spirit to flex to the Reaper. We saw him flex the Reaper on this last point before. We'll see if he does that to force the McCree back out of Sure, for it. But here comes C9. Primal Rage out from Gods, leading the way, forcing Rise Nation back a bit. And even though they lose Adam, Rise is on the back foot. They're getting poked down from all levels, and they're not going to be able to stay in this fight. 
Well, the Primal Rage comes out and is going to try to knock people around. It has been rather even. They traded Lucio's mm. early. A nice pull there will lead to short forward going down. Retsy gets the killing blow. Midnight going to create some space on this cart with a uh, interesting whole hog, but take it, I guess. C9 dove that really aggressively to a point they shouldn't have. They had the early kills. They didn't need to do that. They end up losing two people, and they give Rise and way back into a fight that really should have been there. Now they have to get in the payload to stall things out. They get onto the payload to start it out. The sound bear is in, and here comes Sully. The attack Pfizer oh in from the back, but Spirit explodes for three. And suddenly Rise Nation on the verge of punching this through. They have to get in the payload now. Sully, not really the opportunity. Knocked back in a fight versus Spirit. One meter to go, and there it is. Rise taking the better of C9 towards the very end. And Hex, that minute seven is a very important number. Now yeah. for C9, if they just complete the map in overtime, they don't get another attack. So there's even more pressure on C9's attack now. His spirit has just been so important to this team over the last couple of days. I mentioned we know what Retzi is. You know what you're going to get from Retzi. You have to have someone else to pick it up. That he just dropped that self-destruct right on top of the cart. It allows them to not use the cart for cover. There's not a great deal of cover that's not two feet outside your spawn there, and that, that won them the map. That, that finished it out for him. Spirit's been playing great on a variety of heroes, and that's exactly what Rise needs. I will say that, I again, I like seeing Reaper back into play there, where it did for sure for onto the McCree, and I do wonder how things would have turned out there if that last push wasn't successful. I think we might have seen the Reaper come back into Vogue, and... I mean, for me, you think back to the last time we've seen Reaper on the NA side of things, I think you almost have to go back to Envy when Harry Hook was running it yeah. very heavily for the most part. So at least that is the most famous example. I mean, Spirit also played the McCree earlier in the day on this map on defense. So he's been playing a lot of different stuff. Um, as the, I mentioned yesterday, sometimes they want him to play different things, but Spirit kind of does what he wants. And I guess don't argue with results. No, not at all. And Rise now. Potentially, we'll see if they can make the most of this and even up the series one to one. Still plenty of ways that C9 can set a quick time on their own here. And you take a look at how they're going to run this. They're going to be running with Sure4 in the skies and God's deep diving to the back. Selly being the muscle in the back for Hitscan and Zephyr diving in with Gods. Yeah, Adam will be switching off of this Widow. I cannot imagine they run a solo support here. Yep, there goes the Mercy switch. Um, yeah, triple tank combination for Rise Nation. This is something that they're they're pretty practiced on, pretty good at. It's going to be interesting to see where they hold. I'd like to see them do, like, the pillow fort kind of hold that LG Evil did. The pillow fort would be phenomenal. I don't think that's going to happen. I do think the person to watch here is going to be Spirit, where we've seen Roadhogs really mess with early dive offenses here on Eichenwalds, particularly if you can isolate the Winston. So the entire meta here of Spirit versus Gods will be interesting as Gods moves in over the top, protects himself with the shield, and is giving Spirit a lot of respect. Does not give Spirit a clean hook opportunity oh. to begin with, but gets hooked in at the very end anyways, but manages to leap out. Gods is still alive here, and C9 starting to make inroads. They have Rise surrounded from all ends. They lose Sully though, so we'll see if Rise can take advantage and push this back. Ressi's trying to find an angle to take down this combo here. The, the best Mercies will heal everyone, and the best Pharaohs know how to play defensively when that has to happen. Still, after those first couple kills, nothing much has happened. Spirit just narrowly misses her. Spirit has been a bit tortured here. He did have that early hook on the gods, wasn't able to finish it out, and that's been haunting them as gods has been a key part of this fight ever since. But the hook comes in on the Zephyr, but no. Gods, finishing it out. Sureforce still a threat in the skies, and now doesn't have to worry about much. Taking down his only threat in Rutsi, and that should be a take here for C9. And again, Hex, I'm just going to note that first hook where Gods is pulled in and just yeah. barely got out. If Gods dies there, I think that we still see Rise holding on to first. It's what makes Adam an exception in Mercy, knowing that he's not just tethered to his Pharaoh. Other people need healing, and he's able to identify damage before it comes in, so he's always on the spot. So, T9 now with plenty of time to work with. A little under five minutes here for a second. Sure for holding on to the barrage, and here comes Gods. He's gonna just engage with the Primal Rage, and that's a distraction from Sure for. He's looking for the opportunity to drop the barrage, giving plenty of respect to Retzi, who's used the attack visor here. So he's gonna wait just a little bit, but the self destruct opens the way. Now 65, and Sure for just sends him off the edge towards the end, drops the barrage just for good measure. And this, though not decisive, is going more the way of C9, but Desro drops a late hammer, knocks down two, and he might have just saved that for Rise. 
Desro's been quiet through a lot of games, and then all of a sudden he just busts out with an enormous Earth Shatter. However, all for naught as Selly cleans up the tanks, push coming in for Cloud9. Cloud9 now getting the payload moving forward despite that decent pushback from Rise towards the end. Still four minutes left for C9, so realistically, if you're going to have a Rise win here, I do think that they need to drain quite a bit more time off the clock, and this is probably the time to do it. We've seen teams be a lot better at punching things in towards the end. It's not quite the hold that you could always expect. So we'll see what happens here. Note that Adam has the Resurrection up, Midnight has Grav, and the Graviton is out. Pulls in three early on, but everyone gets knocked out. Still though, Desro takes down two at the Fire Strike, including Adam. So there will be no res here, Hex. They didn't even get Adam in that Graviton, and I thought that was a mistake. I was gonna mention, you have to get Adam <laughs> in the Grav, and I think he just ended up walking into the Fire Strike and both players confused well, by it. Well, that is why you have Desro serenading the chat with what? Not what, but what? W-A-T, which always expresses a slightly higher level of confusion where, hey, sometimes the Fire Strike homes in and finds a target. Who can question the will of a Reinhardt? Well, Adam will have the resurrection for this next fight, which I guess would be the silver lining, as Cloud9 just walks up top and takes all of that away. Meanwhile, they've got a ton of push on the cart, forcing out a Sunbear. Sunbear does come out. Sure, for is still looking for knockoffs. Not going to get it here early on. Six versus six, but C9 has much better positioning here. Surrounding Rods from all ends, but Rutsy going to drop the Tac Pfizer. Moving to the back, but taken down by the Barrage. It's a beautiful flanking Barrage from Sure, for that picks off three, and that will be the gates of the castle being knocked right down by C9. Well, it might be time to uh, use your microphone magic and reset that, compress uh, that compressor you've got there. Hearing a little static from you. Regardless, the door will be broken down and Cloud9 looks to roll through. We mentioned that they must finish before overtime here as 107 on the clock for Rise, but 343 left. A lot of time to be able to push this in and still have that res in their back pocket. This is plenty of time here to even things up and then some where then it would be C9 with an advantage. Rise is going to have to find a way, but so many ults up here for C9. This should be a fight C9 wins, especially if Adam can stay alive. They take down Desro early and take a look at Adam right now. Adam's just hiding in the back. He's expecting his team to die and yet C9 exceeding expectations, not in fact going down. The sound barrier comes down and they get another. Six to four right now for C9 as they go in deeper. But sure for going down, this is set the timer for the res. Adam will probably be bringing him up here no matter what he's gonna yeah. dive in and the resurrection is in but it is one way to play around res to not kill anyone else and just make them solo res things gods was already in the back line keeping them all in spawn doing so much damage up front now the fight continues fully reset 6v6 Self-destruct into the top from Zephyr, making space, doesn't get anything, but Rai's still in a very tough position. Rutsy, gonna try and pull it back. Tac Pfizer, nullified by D.Va, and taken down by Sully. Sure for the barrage to the back, effectively getting two, and now C9, just a little bit away from that yellow box of, not victory, but getting the third point and bringing us to extra rounds. A little disappointed no Sombra there, but I guess they didn't need it. They just absolutely rolled, and at a certain point, they have to find a better answer for Sure4. There are some Pharahs you can ignore. I'm not sure that Sure4 is one of them. No, and you do see that come out for teams where they go, well, the Pharah, how much damage can they truly do? Well... When it's Sure4, it's quite a bit. Sure4 is one of the unique players in Overwatch where we tend to call them unicorns, where yeah. he can play great hit scan, he can play great projectile. There's very little that Sure4 can't play. Even heroes like Roadhog, where he will humbly say that, oh, I'm not that good at Roadhog, you could still see him have absurd plays. So Sure4, probably one of the most versatile players in the entire game. He played D.Va earlier today and played it well. He can play Zarya. It's amazing. Yeah, and that he's one of like two <laughs> unicorns in the entire scope of all of Overwatch. It's just so impressive to watch. Well, I'll say this for sure for he also does a lot of streaming and has to do a lot of competitive queue. And if you don't have a pocket Zarya, you're going to be in some <laughs> tough times. That is a recipe to losing some SR, let me tell you. Yeah, I watched Shorefor stream a little bit last night, and it was getting late, and I'm like, doesn't he have to get up early tomorrow? Don't I have to get up early tomorrow? We should both go to bed. Anyway, the defense now for Cloud9 is going to have t uh, to defend for one minute, which is likely two pushes, depending on how long the fights go. Spirit busting out the Reaper on first point again. 
And why not? It worked out well the first time, but C9 should be a little bit more prepared for it this time. Spirit now under more pressure here from Sure4 as Sure4 looks at him as he comes back in. And this Cloud9, they're taking a very defensive spot here. They're not really going too aggressively, aside from Selly, who is the bait. Unfortunately, Selly dies without much being done to rise, but Rutsi goes down as well. Five versus five, Tracer no longer a factor, and Sure4 doing so much damage with these rockets as Desro takes one right to the grill. His spirit's trying to get a lot done. He's trying to 1v2 tanks, and that's not going to work out with the D.Va in the mix. You need Gods to over-aggress so you can punish him, but I think they've learned their lesson. Gods is going to be Zephyr's best friend, or vice versa. 15 seconds left remaining here for Rise. Them just touching the point now will be a little bit tricky. Retsy will be that man. He's sneaking in from the side. C9 just looking for someone to knock them away before they get there, but Retsy should be able to triple blank in. He's waiting for it. And they do contest the point. It's not even Rutsy that goes in. Rutsy is on mercy duty, looking to get Adam from the back. Not going to get to begin with the sure four drops of barrage. The barrage doesn't quite get that much. So Rise still very much in this fight. And now with Roof going down, there's a big opportunity here. But Adam, the resurrection comes up mid fight. And is he going to get it off? He's waiting, waiting for maximum value here playing on the edge and does use a res towards the very end, but it might be too late. Rise Nation has done terrible damage to this point. And it's Desro showing up big again. He's had double and triple kills all throughout the day for this team, and he can be quiet until he's not. Just goes off. They will grab this point. Interesting enough, they were in midnight on the Widowmaker here, and he got a pick during that fight and just offered a lot of pressure from them. So he's going to stick on it for now. Maybe. Yeah, he's going to look for another pick. It's a good way to deal with a Pharah, but they're off Pharah. Well, now we are in the overtime rush. This can be one of the most exciting times in all of Overwatch, where Ryze's potential here is undefined. They're out of time, but they're not out of hope. C9 wants to win a team fight as soon as possible here to end the threat of this payload going way too far. And now you take a look at Ryze. They have Dragon Blade on deck, and with Bretzy pulling up Sure4, this is a huge opportunity. 6v5, we'll see where it goes. Locke going to pay the price, but here comes the Dragon Blade. Spirit looking for one in the back. Gonna get bopped away. Will he get the Ana here? Trying to get it, and no! He does not get it. The Dragon Blade not connecting, and suddenly Rise in tough shape as they try to keep this payload moving forward. While the bubble goes down on the card, as they still have pretty even numbers, Retsy did find Rolf in the back line, so a lot of their healing is down. Still trading out as Refty 1v1 Selly. This is a brawl. Refty's gotta stay on the cart, though, and Gods is doing his best to bully him away. Well, this is where the offense is just trying to stall this out and keep things going. The respawn is relatively close, but it's not enough. They can't stand the payload, and C9 stops the progress right here and right now. Well, 234 to beat that marker. Well, 234 to at least grab first point. It's going to be a tough hold. Uh, we've seen... T I Eichenwald is so variable on first point defenses. You can get shut out completely. You can grab it on first push. I really don't even know what to expect. Hex, I just have one question for you right now. <laughs> With your recent change to Robot Allegiance here, do you feel more sadness over Mondata's death? Is that Are those new feelings that are arising for you right now? Robots don't have feelings. They have programs to convince you they have feelings. You're just being fooled. <laughs> okay, so you're programmed by Torbjorn then, and you're not actually Tyrannic. Got, Got it. But looking at the defense coming out here from C9, or sorry, from Rise. They're in a decent spot here, Hex, where if they can hold for two and a half minutes on first, that's going to be it. C9 is going to have to strike relatively quickly here if they want to give themselves time to get to that yellow box of victory. Sure4 is still not picking a hero yet. Zephyr was on the Sombra. Maybe Sure4 is going to play that. No, he's not. I think you could run Sombra here. It gives you two really good attacks because you will probably get two EMPs up in two and a half minutes. Guaranteed how fast that goes up, but they're just going to run... The double DPS this time, as Zephyr is going to go on to D.Va instead. So double tank, double DPS, double support. So standard 2-2-2 into triple tank of Rise Nation. And C9, they're just going to probably go into this rather quickly. Zephyr and God's ready to dive in, sure for ready to support. And Zephyr, the first one in, and also the first one out, immediately demeched by Spirit. So Spirit, this time focusing on the D.Va or the Winston to fairly good results. Now Zephyr's still alive here, but it's going to be a while before he can re because Spirit on a rampage picks off both supports, and that is how a Roadhog can win the fight. Yeah, and they're trying to get some late kills here, too. They will stagger Zephyr just a little bit. But that is 43 seconds off the clock, and you have to think that attack took about a minute. Two more shots at this. 
And as I mentioned the first time around for the Rise defense, I do think Spirit is a key person to watch here. It didn't quite work out the first time around with the hook on the gods, but this has been a much better defense here so far. And speaking of gods, he gets up close and personal to Spirit, eats a scrap gun shot, and down he goes. A bit of redemption here for Spirit as he sets up Rise for another successful team fight victory. Bretzi's been winning his 1v1s on whatever hero he's on. No different now as he takes down Sally in the 76 duel. Now it's getting down to it. They're going to have to back out. Shorefor's trying to poke from long range, but I think it's probably the last good push here. It almost certainly is. A minute 15 left. It's C9 under the gun, and they don't have a lot of resources to work with. They're going to need Selly to make the most of this upcoming TAC Pfizer flank. God is up there to support him, and here comes Selly. Looking for the TAC Pfizer. They lose lock early on for Rise, so already a good setup, but Spirit crushes the TAC Pfizer, hooks him in, and takes him out. And Midnight doesn't get the Graviton off in time. Ends up dying. Still opportunities here for C9. Two people died with alts there, which is brutal for Rise. The fact they're still in it is amazing to me as Locke and Midnight had alts. They both died. This res might put the nail in the coffin. Very well could, very well should. And C9 with those two extra kills, they're actually leaving Spirit alive here to some extent where it could be dangerous, but they're going to take him out and that's going to effectively be a stagger. Still, you take a look at the position that rises in here, they can very much defend the CL box victory. It's just going to matter, can Midnight land a good grab? Yeah, Midnight was coming out thinking to go back in the fight, but he rotated back. They want to get this high ground possible. The good thing about that Hex, you are pulse. roboting, so I will take over for this next part here where it is like just full on Mondetta. I don't know what to tell you. But Midnight coming in, holding on to the Graviton for this fight. No time left here from C9 and Spirit goes down. That is the one thing that could not happen, but did happen. So now it's going to be a 6v5. Rise, they do have the grab, but will they make the most of it? Midnight, under pressure, doesn't want to toss us into Zephyr's defensive matrix, but he's knocked out of the mech. Now's the time to drop the grab. And there it is. The Graviton comes in, two members in, and the fall through is there for Rise. They're pushing C9 off. C9 going to have their hands full and just keeping this delayed. Oh my god, Adam clutched that res so hard. The res comes in, and C9 still in this, and yet so is Midnight. Melts down gods right away, and it is a last moment brawl between both teams. C9 fighting for the map win, and Selly going off. Picks off two. Opens up sure for the going deeper. The barrage connects, and C9 looking like they have turned this back. A late Earth Shatter tries to come in from Desro. Not enough. And what was certainly a very close map goes the way of C9. Now up two to nothing in the third place match. Adam had like 10 HP and 95% res and was able to stay alive long enough, clutch it out. I think that's the reason they win this map. My God. That res was game changing. There's no other way to put it. And I will say is that Zephyr did really stop Midnight from getting a quicker Graviton up there where it was interesting what he did where he was basically doing 180s on D.Va where he would look away from Midnight and then suddenly shift towards him. And the entire goal was to try and catch him off guard and eating a grav. It was some interesting mind games going on there. Well, that was intense. Our next map is Cloud9's pick. It is going to be Nepal. And based on what we saw in Ilios, you have to give them the advantage overall on just the skirmishy nature of control points. As an aside, I'm sorry for being a robot. We knew it was going to happen today. I know what the issue is. I can't fix it. If you work for Comcast, tweet at me. That's how I got it fixed last time. <laughs> If you are a high level Comcast tech with Please access to do terrible things and you might actually also work for the NSA, tweet at Hex to get his information and fix his problems. I honestly that's basically what he's saying. That's a trade I'll make. I live without shame. You can know everything about me. Doesn't matter. I just want my internet fixed. I know everything about you and it haunts me to this every day, <laughs> Hex. I was never the same coming back from Denver, just so you know. Well, you know. Some people's lives I improve, and some I just mentally scar forever. You happen to be the latter. Not many in the floor. A lot of people either. on that latter group. A lot <laughs> yeah, of people on that say. latter group. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are heading into DePaul. It will be the third map of the series. This was C9's pick to begin with, so C9 very comfortable in bringing Rise to control. Rise now fighting f for their tournament life, in a sense, or at least in the third place match. They can't get back in. This is not double limb. And yet for Rise, it would be good, at least from their perspective, to grab this map and extend things out. Well, it does seem like we need a pause here. 
Rise Nation with a tactical pause, maybe going over some strategies. Down 2-0. And, uh, you know, impossibility of finishing out of the money here. And we are waiting for Retsy where... Retsy had to use the bathroom, or no, it was actually Faz. Retsy, no shame in throwing Faz under the bus. And you know what, why not? That's probably just karma coming back to bite Faz after his very vocal outbursts in Pro Talk. It's been an Overwatch tradition of always calling out whoever's going to the bathroom. And it, it, it goes way back to envious days. Envy was the worst, man. Like, Envy really had no shame in throwing their teammates under the bus. And if I had a nickel for every time I heard Internet Hulk say, Harry Hook is on the can, I might have a dollar. Which is saying a lot at that point. Yeah, Gods does uh, express his dismay over Retsy's hair. Of course, uh, polar opposites when it comes to the, the headspace of those two players. Retsy with beautiful locks. Gods uh, looking for the clean look. Rise is probably the one team in professional Overwatch that could get sponsored by a shampoo and conditioner company, and it would make total sense. I mean, really, just put them in an Herbal Essences commercial. That's all <laughs> I, I want. I was just going to say that. Out of my head, ZP. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> They off course. Well, well uh, this is a stage you can see a lot of different stuff on. I mean, Midnight's on the Junkrat now, and that's a way to make a lot of fans. This is the stage you could play Junkrat on. You absolutely can play Junkrat here, and somewhere Mangachu is smiling, where... No, he's not smiling anymore. The switch-ups are coming in. We will not see everyone's favorite rubbish raccoon. No Muck Marmot. Uh, no Orisa either, which is this is the also the one stage you see Orisa on. So both teams running pretty standard here. A McCree on the side of Cloud9, though. That's going to be played by Selly. And one thing we've seen, especially in Korean play, is that there's a lot more love for McCree, and Selly follows in that tradition of wanting to run McCree a little bit more regularly, and this is a decent map to run McCree on. There's good sight lines for him, good opportunities to get used to Flashbang, and you see Selly right now looking for that burst damage on the Retsy. Not going to get it early on, and the Discord Orb forces him back. Here comes Spirit, but no, not able to finish a kill. Has locked, just drops the orbs from across the map. Down goes Selly, and down goes C9 chances of taking this first fight. And they're running that very distance damage composition with a 76 and a McCree, but Locke also can do damage from a distance, took both of them down, and first point captured here for Rise Nation. It's going to be interesting to see, well, Shorefort off of it right away. So Shorefort is actually going to switch to Roadhog, while Selly will take over 76. So they're going to put a little more meat on the ground. Three tanks. Yeah, I don't think C9 likes what they saw with the early McCree opening, even though it very well could have worked. I think for them, they don't want to use McCree when they're stuck in a retake situation. It's yeah. fine when it's neutral, and it's fine when you're holding, but they wanted a little bit more mobility for actually going in. And Selly drilling Faz early on here for the first kill, and now has Retsy in hot position as he takes him out as well. It's a double for Selly, and C9 should be able to just evict Rise from this point. Yeah, late kill from Spirit, late double kill from Spirit, actually, but all for naught here is a... Well, I mean, they should be able to get themselves in a 6v4 situation now, so that's why you see Cloud9 backing out a little bit. They know that they lost a couple a little bit late. Rise, meanwhile, getting back onto that point, and... Might? No, they don't retake it right away. Gods moves in, ruins the party, but for how long? He just eats a pulse bomb and dies. Rise, not flinching at all at C9's rather half-hearted attempt to contest that. So, Rise, when the smoke settles, up 50% to 19. Pretty good start to Sanctum for them here so far. Yeah, again, it's a lot of this for Rise <laughs> the last couple of days has been how good Spirit has been. He's gotten four kills in the last couple of minutes here. He's just running wild on Tracer, but it also lets Retsy not have to play the Tracer. He can play 76 and just chipping damage from the back. Well, Rise certainly in a good position here, and they're going to go deeper. They use the Transcendence, and Retsy dives right in, not actually able to get the Transcendence love, getting zoned out, and barely gets away, gets away from the tank support, and with 35 HP, ends up living, only to almost get knocked off, but it's been a rough go for Retsy as he gets spooked and bopped around, but still has the Tac Visor up. Coming back in, Tac Visor now in play, looking for more, and finally, his fight ends as Selly treats him to the Helix Rocket surprise. That was probably one of the most chaotic player point of views I've seen. Finally, his watch has ended. Midnight had actually threw his self-destruct right into the pit, trying to uh, vaporize Mandata's gold, as you would put it. But only one more fight needed from Rise Nation here. They will be at the economic disadvantage, but if they're keeping close track, it's so hard to know this window, but they will have Sound Barrier before Cloud9. Adam's still 10% away. 
C9 going to have to win many a fight here in a row, and yet with the sound barrier up from Faz, there is a brief window, but that yeah. window is closing. They can match sound barrier for sound barrier now for C9, and in fact, at C9, they drop the beat first. The beat gets dropped from Rise and turn. Both teams protected by the barrier. It cancels out. Selly still on the back here, holding the tech visor, and now he uses it. Takes down Faz immediately, and I actually think he could have held that hex. I don't think it was necessary with how the rest of the fight was going on the point. Yeah, I agree with you, but as a Soldier 76, when you see both the tanks go down, your eyes just get wide, and you're like, there's nothing to stop these bullets, so I probably could have held it after they'd just gotten two kills. Hmm. The problem here, though, is that this is a big opportunity for Rise now. They only have to take one more fight. They don't have to worry about attack visor, and they're going to have a bit of an alt advantage here in a moment if they can avoid anyone getting picked off. So for Rise, this is their chance to start things out well here on the Paul. Spirit diving in, drops the pulse bomb, doesn't connect. And yet still, C9 gang pushed back. Adam immediately off. And now the six versus five, the transcendence is down. 5v5 as Red Sea falls, somewhat more back and forth, but it's still better initiation here for Rise. The counter transcendence comes out as the trades continue to go down. And self-destruct will go and clear off the point that lets Rise not oh. take it back just by the D smallest margin. Doesn't happen. Selly was able to stay alive there, takes down Spirit and piles on. And unfortunately for Rise, they are thrown off. And what a good effort there from C9 to win a fight where, frankly, they weren't favored at all towards the very end. I've been so impressed with gods throughout the tournament and just watching his transition over to tank over the last couple months. I just feel he's got a great understanding of the game, and that's been echoed by sentiments from Bishop as well, that just talking to gods is just... You you learn more about the game every time you talk to him. There's a lot of players like that, but I've heard just nothing but great <coughs> intelligence coming out of him. Well, gods, we talked about versatility with Surefire, but yeah. talk about gods and just playing the hero roulette over the course of Overwatch, where we've seen him go from flex to main tank and to dps at the beginning where there was a point where gods was known as a mccree widow specialist that yeah. used to be his jam feels pretty far in the past now at this point i, I still remember that grapple shot on hollywood though it will forever <laughs> be in my mind uh god bless the old josh og tournament the actual best showing that the old lg then nrg roster ever had well, a little more wide open on this stage of Nepal. Both teams kind of just poking right back and forth. It is difficult to dive against these comps. They do see Selly alone and try to go in on him, taking down. Red Sea taking down Selly immediately. 6v5, 4 rise, and now they just pile on. And with gods down, that really opens the floodgates here. There's not a lot of ways C9 can pull this back. And in fact, Adam, they signal for retreat. They're going to back it up. They give up this first point, and rise even though they've lost the last round hex they very well should have won it and they come out strong here on the second and this is cloud nine's map pick too but rise so far has, has given one of their best showings uh, it's it really to me it's still going to come down to spirit can can spirit get the damage he needs it's a good tracer map it is a very good tracer map but this time things go a little bit better for Sully. finds lock early on and now c9 in the driver's seat with them getting the first two early picks and rise not much they can do here at this point spirit is good but he's not good enough to even this up at this point without a pulse bomb up and ready it's just stall time right now that's what midnight and spirit are trying to do to <laughs> trade lives for percentage cloud nine will take it back over the rise at 35 percent alt's generally even here so a lot of this will be execution Although, actually, now that I say that, Cloud9, well, yeah, it's going to be like 6 to 5. Hmm. Cloud9 is loaded for barrier, and I think the danger here for Rise is that Rise could open with a sound barrier, not realizing just how much C9 has. This is a perfect opportunity for a junk rush to whittle down the C9 ultimates, but they took down Sure4. That changes the calculus. Now you actually do want to use ultimates to try and win it outright. So Rise all in after that early pick, but C9 fighting right back with ults of their own. Still relatively even, and in fact, C9 not able to make the most out of their ults as Red Sea goes off, takes down two, and C9 thrown off of the point and their resources effectively used for nothing. It's just really nice play there again from Locke, who had a, a good opening stage, but the sound barrier had dissipated. Cloud9 had a better later sound Look barrier, but Locke just transcended everyone out of danger. Well, the interesting thing here is how long Sure4 delayed. This should have been Rise's point many a tick ago, and yet Sure4 delayed that out for about another 10 to 12 seconds, buying quite a bit of progress for C9. A good way of making lemonade out of lemons. 
he give the God. lemons back to life. I don't know. I can't do the Cave Johnson, but everyone knows. I, I'm sorry. I was actually completely yeah. thinking of Cave Johnson there. <laughs> something, something explosive lemons. Well, now that we're taking that trip down in the history, let's take a look at this next fight. It's Adam getting isolated on all sides right now. Tanks in his face, and yet he's healed up. Boops, the competition away, and suddenly here comes C9. Adam's still very alive, and Selly on the hunt now, looking for extra kills here on the point. Retzi, a big threat, grabs one, but don't know if it's going to be enough as C9 is in a dominating position right now. Uh, uh, again, oh. just... I'm so surprised at God's survivability. He's been discorded most of the game and somehow gets in still with damage. He doesn't retreat immediately, but like lays on the razor's edge. Bretzi just got jobbed in that last fight. He had Sully dead the rights and out of nowhere, like a phoenix from the sky, Zephyr just slides right in with the defensive matrix and <laughs> ruins that one-on-one -on -one for Bretzi. That's some great coordination, man. The Cloud9 coordination has, has been probably the most impressive part about their game right now. You, you can tell that the coaching and the, the gelling of the roster is coming together, and we haven't even seen their final form, I don't think. No, we have not. Uh, there's at least four more forms if DBZ has taught me anything. Sally, though, under assault and back, going to counter with attack visor, gets Dez early on, kept alive by the Transcendence, and now looking for a little bit more. Decides against the flank. Five versus five on the point. Still options for Rise, but... C9 throwing every ult they have into this, and why not? It's at 94%. If they take this fight, they will take the round, and yet the tank play of Rise trying to keep them in it, but it's just not going to be enough. The self destruct will clear Repsi off the point. That's a lot of their damage gone. Desro comes back in because he died first in that fight. It looks like Cloud9 will take this stage and set themselves up to take another map. The thing that's a little bit disappointing here for Rise is that if you look at the box score after, if you look at something like Winston's Lab or take a look at Selly's toned form as he does push-ups, you would see that it's two to nothing in favor of C9. But this has been a very close two nothing. It hasn't been like Rise has been getting 300% to zero or anything like that. These were both winnable rounds for Rise. They just weren't able to put it together over the course of the round. Yeah, the thing that stood out to me there was just the difference in Winston survivability. Not necessarily the Winston play, but just how the teams are playing around the Winston. A lot of those fights, Desiree would dive in and just get focused and taken out first. And without any of the tankiness up that Winston can provide, or without the, the cleave damage to soften targets up, they had a very difficult time doing the remaining damage. So... Rise right now on their last opportunity to bring the series back, entertain the idea of a reverse sweep and go from there because C9 now on match point, third place, well in their sights. Rise going to have to find a way through here on the village stage of Nepal. Well, the Immortals almost reverse swept yesterday, so not out of the realm of possibility. And Rise, it's not been completely one sided after the first couple stages of Ilios. They've been in every one of these fights. Razor's Edge, they just got to find a little bit more. Sure 4 takes on Spirit Start. Sure 4 flanked around the side, got his man, will be demecking Diva, and oh no, this could be a party room if he wills it. He's not going in here just yet and doesn't really need to, but actually is going to be chasing Lucio. And no, actually doesn't even want that. That's something to be said here for the new Lucio, where. You see DPS players sometimes avoid going in on it now that he does more damage and now they can boop you away. Lucio is finally now a threat rather than just a nuisance. Uh, you do have to think twice going in on him as you would with a Zenyatta because you can die as a tracer against a Lucio. In any case, Rise making their approach onto the point once more. Sure for dives right in with gods. Great coordination between the two of them. Deflects right in Locke's face and immediately dispatches him. So C9 still with firm control of the point. And I got to say, Hex, after taking a look at C9 and well and now taking a look at them here on Village, if I feel like these more complex maps in terms of the geometry actually work out really well for C9 and how they counter engagements coming in. Yeah, the counter engage is absolutely right, but also Rise is just struggling to engage. Desro dives in and dies nearly every time. Here's another solo dive from Desro, discorded immediately, and they're going to transcend right off. So I'm going to rise them. Dragonblade out here from Sure 4 gets one early on, looking for more, might not have the targets as Gods and Wolf really being the ones to clean most of that up. It's not the cleanest engage from Rise. They are pushed back and Hex, Rise now down to their final two fights as you take a look at Midnight. He was going to get staggered, but he just throws himself off to explore the mountains of Nepal. I very much like the last stage. Gods has not died yet this game, and Desro dives in, tries to get damage done, but the follow-up is never really there as they get counter-dive pretty hard. Gods sneaking now to the low ground, and he's going to try to do the same thing. 
The moment Desra goes in, gods will leap past him and go to the rest of the team. I've got you in my Here comes Rusty, trying to turn this back around. Tag fights are coming out early, but he has tanks in his face at all angles. Does find Wolf towards the very end, but that's going to be it. Gets spooked out, and here comes Selly on the counter. Attack fights are out for him. Not getting too much here early on. Has to burn most of it in the Desro, so Ryze definitely coming out on top in the trade of Tag Fizer's there, and Ryze able to flip the point as a result. Flip the point, used a late transcend to make sure that they did so as they had to use everything to, you know, if they lost that fight, they, they're out of the series. So they still are ahead a little bit on alt economy for the moment. This is a good point for Midnight to just chill on because the self destructs again. It's one of those points where you can't hang out. You got to get off. Certainly. And for Rise now, every fight matters. If they lose a single fight, that's it. They will be taking fourth. So... They need to just have an iron hold here against C9. And for C9, they have plenty of time to work with here. They can make this a junk rush. They could make it a full attack. It doesn't really matter. The sound pair comes out here from Rise early on. And C9, they're actually holding resources. They might be making this more of a junk rush. If they got a pick, I think they would sound bear a dragon blade. But for now, no, they're just gonna do it. Go in. The sound yeah. barrier dragon blade combo is out. They get lock immediately. And sure for looking for any dragon blade kills that simply won't happen. They might not need to happen though. It's still two early kills from C9 and Rise. Well on the way to being eliminated here as sure for gets the kills he's looking for. And that will potentially be the map and the series for Cloud9. It was just so smart from Adam there as the sound bearer came off from Rise Nation and they retreated. They just bailed out of it, waited for it. Everyone rallied around Adam. They got the counter sound barrier, able to go in nigh invincible. Get a lot of kills. Desro had a rough game, but he will get play of the match. The interesting thing here is that it's a Winston play of the game without people getting knocked to their death. It does happen from time to time. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand the algorithm sometimes, but I'll take it. Well, in any case, that was our third place match. C9, a bit of a disappointment for them because they were effectively knocked out of the main part of the tournament by one team fight, but they get the redemption here in the third place matchup. Coming up next, though, we are going to be taking a look at the grand final, which will be CLG versus LG Evil. Both teams coming out and having a better tournament than I think people expected of them coming in, Hex. I, I expected CLG to have upset potential yesterday, and obviously they were able to do it, although by a razor's margin, Immortals almost came all the way back on them. Uh, I think LG Evil is playing the style that we saw them play when they were on their big run, and they're a little bit inconsistent across the board, but they're getting more consistent plays out of their big tanks, which is I think is their best style. There were times they toy with 3 DPS, mm -hmm. even 4 DPS, but I think when they're playing their best, it's a lot because Super and Train, and Train can play everything. He's... He's been uh, another player who's really had a breakout this tournament. So, Hex, I would throw us directly to a break, but then you wouldn't have the opportunity to tell people about all the free stuff they can get by participating in the other events going on around the stream. Hex, what can the people win? Well, we do have a predictions contest. That is cyberpowerpc.sevo.com slash predictions. If you haven't been doing it, it's going to be hard to win now as you'll only be able to predict one game. Puts you a little behind the eight ball. But if you have been doing it, make sure to get those final predictions in when jerseys, mouse pads, keyboards, a combination of all of them. And if you're like me and don't know anything about Overwatch and can't predict these games at all, go ahead and do the giveaways. That's cyberpowerpc.sevo.com slash giveaway. Just enter in all sorts of different ways to enter. We have a Core i7 7700K, uh, solid state drives from Western Digital, Corsair mechanical keyboards, everything you need to build yourself a sweet rig. So definitely get in on our giveaways and our predictions. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. Grand finals incoming.